single facility location rectilinear model. In my previous talk, I explained single facility location straight line model. In that model, if I have two points, the distance between two points is computed as a straight line. We find the difference between x's, squared, and then we find the difference between y's and the squared, and then put everything under the square root. That is how straight line distance is computed. Different between x's squared plus different between y's squared, and then all under the square root. Rectilinear distancing is a little bit different. If I have two points, the distance between them is computed as the absolute value of the distances x values plus the absolute value of the difference between y values. In a straight line model, the difference between these points is computed like this, but in rectilinear model, like summation of this one and this one in terms of the absolute values. So this is how the distance between a point with a specific x and y value and a potential inland port location is computed. This is x of the inland port, this is y of the inland port. And in this specific example, we don't have inland port, we do have a distribution center to create a relationship between these suppliers and these markets to minimize the total volume of transportation times distance of transportation. The procedure is the same as the previous straight line method that I discussed. The only difference is how the distance is computed. We assume this is x and y of the location that we want to find for the distribution center to organize the relationship between these suppliers and those markets. We find the rectilinear distance between each of the suppliers and this distribution center and also between each market and this distribution center. These are the distances. We multiply them by the corresponding weights and this is the sum product. Data, solver, Minimize this value by changing these values and we also apply a side constraint that these values must be less than or equal to the maximum x and y's which we have in this system. And we also make all decision variables positive and we solve it. So I get this result. And I already know it is not optimal because I have the optimal solution here using a different procedure, but Solver found it as optimal. The total the objective function is nonlinear. And it has a shape like this, if this is the value of the objective function. Solver is trapped in local optimizations. Solver, for example, comes here, look around and see this point and comes here. But then looks around and for some reason, Solver cannot see this point. So it thinks that in all directions, it goes to worsen solution and stops here. Why a better solution exist in this vicinity. When the objective function is nonlinear and the shape of the curve is not continually decreasing or increasing, then the objective function may, then the solution procedure may get trapped in a local optimal. In Solver, to avoid this problem, What I will do, let's erase this one. First of all, let's go here and restart the solver from this point. Solver, solve. 
It finds the optimal solution. It's find it. What is the trick? It is better when we use nonlinear solver to use multi-start. Option. GRG nonlinear use multi-start. Okay. We have the optimal solution, and this is the optimal solution. How did we find this? If we sort these points in this direction and compute their weights, look here, summation of all weights is 2,600. If you add all these numbers together, we will get 2,600. 2,600 divided by 2 is equal to 1,300. I start from this point and move in the x direction. As soon as summation of the weight is 1300 or more than 1300, I stop. Smallest x belongs to this point, San Luis, and the volume of transportation is 700, and that 700 is here, and that 225 is here. So now I have 700 plus. I move in x direction, 300. 1000 is not equal or greater than 1300. I go to the next point, plus 225, therefore it will be 1225, is not equal or greater than 1300. I move forward, 500. Now it is 1,725, and I stop over there. So I go to this center, I draw a line. This is where the X of the distribution center is. Now I repeat the process in Y direction. 250. What is the second point in the y direction? So this point is the minimal in the y direction. What is the second? I think this is 500, and it has a weight of 225. So 225 plus 250 is equal to 475. Still a long way to this one. What is the next one? 300. So that is 775. I need to go up, and here is 700, which makes it 1475, and that is equal or greater than 1300. Therefore, I should stay here, and that is the y direction of my distribution center, and therefore, this is the distribution center. This is the smallest x. Second smallest x, third smallest x, and this is fourth smallest x. And that is this point. I can read it here too, almost. In y direction, again by accident, we stop at the fourth point. y direction, the smallest is 300. After that, I have 500. Then I have 600. And after that, I have 825, therefore this point is 825. And these are what I have got here. So honestly, we really don't need solver even. We just draw this graph and then move in X direction until we pass the half of the total weights in Y direction until we pass or get equal to the half of the weight, and that is the location of the distribution center.